Hi, welcome to our latest Twitch talk. Our subject today is my experience with an ostomy, what I've learned. We're joined by two patient advocates today, Mr. Gordon Levine, as well as Howard Steinberg. They'll be discussing with us how they've adapted to having an ostomy, how their lifestyle has adjusted, physical activity, as well as how their day-to-day -day activities has adapted to the ostomy. I'll start off with Gordon. Thank you for joining us. Would you be able to give us a bit of a, a topo, a bit of an overview of your experience with an ostomy? Sure, thank you, um, and happy to be here. Um, basically, I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer at age 48, uh, just over eight years ago. I just had my eight year anniversary, which is amazing to still be here. Um, the, the disease progressed to stage four, um, which required me to have uh, a major surgery with HIPEC chemo. And because my, although my original tumor was in the, the right side, the uh, recurrence was in the sigmoid and I had to have a temporary ileostomy. And then I had uh, three months of uh, Fulfiri chemo with the temporary ileostomy and was in remission for a second time and had a reversal. This was now 2017. Uh, about a year later, I had a major recurrence with spread to bone, liver, lung, abdomen, back in the colon in the sigmoid area. And um, at that point, um, uh, I went through many rounds of different types of treatments, including a clinical trial, and uh, then ended up doing um, immunotherapy in California for uh, about a year and a half, which amazingly um, eradicated almost all of the disease. It cleared the organs and the abdomen, uh, but there was a resistant um, a bit of disease in my sigmoid area. So uh, the decision at that point was made to remove the rest of my colon. And I, I agreed uh, because I was suffering with a lot of digestive issues and pain and um, they put uh, a, a permanent ileostomy, which uh, was done in June of 2021. So it's about a year and a half now that I've had the uh, permanent ileostomy and my quality of life has improved tremendously since then. Fantastic, thank you for sharing, Gordon. Howard, what has been your experience? Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, and thanks for having me here. Um, I, I was 38, uh, so a little bit younger, uh, but far less complicated than, than Gordon's situation. Um, um, mine was uh, rectal, and, and so when I went through chemo and radiation, uh, originally, um, and, and then the surgery, the hope was that, that they'd be able to save um, uh, some of my colon, so, well, 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 the, the bottom part towards the, the rectum. Uh, they weren't able to do that. And so I ended up with a colostomy um, and, and um, uh, you know, through the years, um, I, I did not reoccur. Mine was stage one. Um, I did have um, uh, some some uh, residual uh, effects, scar tissue, things of that nature, um, and and so uh, over the years I've spent um, uh, a lot of time dealing with you know what what appliances to use and, and how to best manage it, uh, given I'm I'm fairly active uh, outdoor outdoor wise. Fantastic. I'm happy to have both uh, experiences that are similar but very different of having the ileostomy and the colostomy because there are uh, things that are the same, but there are experiences that are quite different. Um, Gordon, following the surgery, how did you adapt to the reality of having an ostomy? So um, when I had the temporary ileostomy in uh, 2016, uh, the hospital gives you a, a certain type of appliance. I, I think the hospitals have deals with certain companies that I guess give them money or give them um, uh, appliances. And I didn't like it, but I, I, I wasn't expecting to have the ileostomy. Uh, I was told by the surgeon that maybe 10% chance 
Um, but because once he opened me up, he saw where the cancer had spread, there was no alternative. I was very lucky that through a mutual friend uh, who has Crohn's and had just had, uh, she had a, an obstruction and had to have a, an ileostomy temporarily, she was able to help me to get a different appliance that was more suitable and to help me through those first few weeks of dealing with um, leaks and how to change properly and 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 kind of the those those initial problems that everyone goes through so when it came time for me to then get the permanent ileostomy i already uh, knew the appliance that i wanted to have so i made sure that i brought them to the hospital and instructed the nurses to use those uh, I had kind of a learning curve already, uh, which made the the transition easier. The other thing is the temporary ileostomy is a little more tricky than the permanent ileostomy. Um, I found uh, I had I had um, certain certain issues uh, um, with when I could change and and I was getting certain kind there's a there's an area around the stoma that when you have that loop ileostomy it, it it could still have stool that comes out of there whereas the permanent one is closed all the way around and you can kind of put your appliance on much more uh, snugly i guess mm -hmm. um so i so all in all because i had had the previous experience and because the 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 permanent was is is a little easier to handle than the temporary that helped me helped me greatly and for you howard how was the first few weeks post-surgery uh, it was um you know I, I they weren't sure until they went in whether to have a a, a permanent uh, colostomy or not so waking up it was you know it was either either i was going to have a bag on the right side or the left side when i woke up and and it was on the left side and, and so it was certainly disappointing. Um, my brother showed up with every type of appliance you could ever imagine and said, okay, we're going to try all of these, right? To, to kind of, you know, work through what would work and not. Um, you know, what, what I would say is that, um, although stressful um, on, on a number of fronts, um, you know, what, what, you know, how am I going to manage this? Can I still be, be active? Because I'm very active. Um, and, and, uh, I was single at the time and what does this mean in terms of, you know, uh, intimacy, what does this mean in terms of, uh, um, you know, my, my daily life and, and, um, you know, what it, 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 from, from, you know, life went on for me mm -hmm. and, and it just becomes part of my daily routine S since that point in time. I haven't stopped my my activities, uh, although initially stressful, and it takes time to to get used to uh, the daily routine. Um, I would say, you know, I'm 20 years in now, and and so um, what uh, what uh, it, it certainly took me uh, a good year and, and a little bit more to really understand what and how I had to operate on, on, mm. a, on a daily basis. I irrigate because I have a colostomy. And so that's a routine that I go through each morning and it allows me to use um, closed end uh, mini bags, right? That, that are there um, uh, on a, um, that I can change and do change if my stomach get, gets upset or things of that nature. And so, so, uh, very different than, than an ileostomy. Um, for the most part, uh, I'm regular, 90% of the time, uh, I'm regular. Um, and, and I just operate as, as I would normally operate, although I have to, you know, irrigating is its own set of uh, um, challenges. It's a 45 minute kind of procedure in the morning. And so, so um, since then, and I know I'm skipping ahead maybe a little bit, you know, I've had three wonderful children. Uh, I've been married, and, and I, my activities today are just as um, extreme, if you will, uh, whether it's mountain biking or skiing or, or other activities, uh, uh, you know, working out uh, than they were before. So it really, it really didn't do much, or it didn't certainly define who I was. 
and and the feeling of of you know it being a, a monkey on my back went away fairly quickly uh, after the year. And so I'm hearing that you had to adapt like your routine in the, in the morning to sort of accommodate it as well. I, I did. Um, you know, I, I need to set aside. You know, people will 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 start their day. Um, and pop into the shower and be ready in 15 minutes. It doesn't work that way with me. You know, I've got to kind of get up. I usually get up a, a, a good uh, hour, hour and a half before I need to get ready. And, and then, then I irrigate coffee tends to help me a little bit uh, in, terms of, in terms of going. And, and, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit longer and, you know, things of that nature. So, so I just set aside the time in the morning to, to kind of go through that routine. And then for the most part, um, uh, you know, I may have to change my bag once or twice during the day. Um, there may be some gas and, and, and the filter, you know, doesn't work all the time. And, but for the most part, uh, you know, um, it's, it's, um, the, the biggest thing for me is to make sure when I'm traveling and I travel quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, or I'm going somewhere, I've got extra bags everywhere. You know, you know, you could, you could, you, you, whether it's in my car or my jacket or, or my, my backpack, you know, I've always got uh, extra, extra bags with me uh, uh, just in case. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that's thinking about that when I pack and, and, and when, yeah. when I'm going here and there, just to make sure I'm prepared is, is uh, takes a little bit of getting used to. Gordon, did your routine uh, change since you um, have the uh, Austin? So it's, it's interesting because uh, for me, uh, to, to empty is doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and, and I find that in the morning, uh, I'm always quieter. And after lunch, it becomes more active. So um, for, for me to, to do this, I like to do a lot of activity in the morning. You know, I'm still dealing with a lot of fatigue issues from seven years of treatment, um, but uh, so so it it's the question is is it a change day or not a change day? Mm. Um, and I ch I change my appliance generally every four days. I find that's the best balance of not doing it every day, but not keeping it on too long to have skin issues, which maybe we'll talk about later. Um, so um uh if it's if it's not a change day it's just empty in the morning and then uh breakfast uh and go for a walk uh go go for a swim do i do i try to do a lot in the morning i have more energy and and the the stoma is more quiet um the only issues and and they're especially in those first uh few months following surgery is getting through the night mm -hmm. um, because often, um, especially with gas, you may have a lot of gas, and uh, you you're going to have some some leaks in the bed those those first few times. Um, uh, I found sometimes around three four in the morning, I was having to go to to the bathroom to empty. Uh, like this morning, for instance, at around six. I had to empty, but that's not too bad. Um, you set yourself an alarm during the night to uh, wake up? I never did. I, I think part of it is a cause of my not sleeping too great, um, is it's kind of like in the back of my head of, uh, of checking. And I think it's subconscious because there's times where I'm in the middle of a dream and I'm like touching myself. Oh, it's full, gotta go. So I think my brain is, kind of not totally relaxed. Um, I know there are people that set alarms in the middle of the night. Um, uh, sometimes it'll go, most of the time it will go very close to, to morning. So mm -hmm. it can be six, seven, eight in the morning. Um, so, but sometimes it just happens that it might be in, in the middle of the night. It's, it's, it's one of the things. I, I noticed the longer though that I have it, the the more regular things are becoming. I think the body takes some time to it to adjust. And for a sleeping position, I I'm gonna get really personal here, Gordon. If you're a stomach sleeper or a back sleeper, did you find that it you had to adjust? 
Yes, yes. Uh, I sleep on my back and I, so I, I have a, I got an adjustable bed so I can prop myself up a little bit, which is really good. I, I, I like to sleep on my side, but I'm afraid really to do it. I do this weird thing where I, I sleep on my back and I might turn my head a little bit. Um, that's something that took me a while to get used to. Definitely. Um, I know there's people that sleep in different positions, but I'm not confident at this point that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a problem. And I'd rather learn. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm getting much better, but my sleep is definitely something that's a work in process. How about you, Howard? Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a little different because, you know, once I've irrigated, sometimes things happen in the middle of the night, but, but you never, interesting, you, you never stop talking, touching your bag to see what's going on. You know what I mean? After 20 years, you're kind of like, okay, what's happening? And, and, and so, um, you know, I, I sleep in all, uh, positions, uh, you know, stomach, side, and back, and, and and um, um, I, I would say when my stomach's upset and I'm a little concerned about it, for me, by the way, um, if my stomach is, is settled well and um, I am, you know, I've irrigated and everything feels good, I, I wear a wound um, uh, to give my skin some some extra uh, breathing for, for, you know, because it can be a little... Um, and a little sensitive over time, I wear a wound bandage over my ostomy, uh, uh, my colostomy. And, and it allows, you know, um, I will even wear bandages and I'll tape them to, to my body to allow my skin time to, to heal back to where it was before. Um, so you would remove, you your, the, remove the, 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 uh, the apparatus and let it breathe? Is that correct? Uh, uh, almost every night. Uh, I uh, don't wear a bag to sleep. Okay. Um, and 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 uh, and I'm, I wear um, uh, wound large, uh, uh, you know, wound um, that absorb liquids because liquid, you know, the the mucus still comes out. Mm -hmm. um, or I tape, you know, uh, sterile pads uh, onto uh, my my uh, colostomy and and and. Uh, taped them to my body uh, that so that that any of the mucus kind of gets absorbed um but i only do that you know and most nights it's fine i only i probably do that uh, um you know six nights out of the week that that allows me to do that one of the things and i think when you touched on it your body gets used to you going at certain times right you know and and so uh initially when when i was irrigating um, the question is whether I was going to do this in the morning or uh, at night, because they told me your 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 uh, your colon gets trained, and, and so I did it in the morning. And so my my body doesn't um, my colon doesn't feel like it has to go in, at night, um, which allows me greater flexibility. In the morning is when things start to move more and there's more gas coming out, and that's when I know I have to to irrigate. I wanted to add one thing. I know a lot of people, because I read the forums, um, talk about not eating after 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, personally, if I don't have some kind of a snack in the evening, um, I I find it hard to sleep. I, I'm, I'm starving. Uh, so I, I'll, and I tend to have something like pretzels, something salty and something that's a little more slowing like pretzels or something that slows the output um and uh it it's it's been fine i haven't had issues uh with that because i know that is that is a concern of people there they're afraid to eat after a certain period uh otherwise they're going to have problems in the middle of the night and i haven't found that to be the case have you had to make any other adjustments to your um to your meals or to your um, your nutrition? Certainly in the initial stages following surgery, you have to be very careful. Even in the hospital itself, I had some boiled carrots and it was it was a nightmare. Um, 
it's you learn all about what the body does with food when you have an ileostomy you see which foods get digested and which foods come mm -hmm. out the way they went in uh so um high fiber was something that i avoided for quite a while um uh, certain vegetables certain fruits i find now i'm able to start adding uh more balanced um variety uh so i was sticking to like cantaloupe and and uh, honeydew melon and boiled carrot and potato white potatoes uh um and avoiding skins on everything but i, I seem to be able to have um uh, strawberries berries seem to be okay um um grapes i can have i, ha I don't need a lot of them uh, tomato i was peeling and seeding the tomatoes for for forever now i i, I slice them thin and they're okay even uh, iceberg lettuce seems to be okay although mm -hmm. honestly it's like i don't know how much of it actually gets digested but it it helps it helps the eating because you're missing a salad you know a salad yeah. is is something that i'm working towards mm -hmm. um cucumber if i peel it and chop it up seems to be okay i'm i'm i think i'm at the stage now uh where it's okay to start to try and and the, port, the important and thing and the important thing is to have a little bit and see if 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 it works or it doesn't work uh because in the early days i would have several i remember even once having sushi and and just the rice the sticky rice got me into like a semi blockage uh situation um which was very very uncomfortable um i i think the body learns and it adapts but the important thing is to 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 try little bits uh for instance if i have a, a cookie and it has a, a couple of nuts in it and I, you know, and of course, chewing and I make sure to chew it properly, it's going to be okay. If I have a, a sushi roll right now, I stay away from the, the seaweed, I, I ask for soy paper or uh, mm -hmm. rice paper. And but if it has a few of those little uh, sesame seeds, for instance, those seem to go right through, they don't cause me any problems. Um, so chewing and trying slowly and of course giving your body time mm. to adapt i think those are kind of the lessons on the way i'm not exactly where i want to be in terms of um the most uh varied diet that i want but my diet's getting there and it's pretty it's pretty good the other thing that i just wanted to add quickly is also um alcohol or beer or soft drinks those things which they tell you to avoid at the beginning uh, i i just went on a trip and i i had every we did bourbon tasting uh we went to jack daniels uh i i had local craft beer i had soft drink all of that stuff was fine um but you need to try a little bit first and see how you're going to feel mm -hmm. and of course if you're going to have alcohol uh it goes without saying you need to hydrate all the time so even if i go out for dinner and i have a glass of wine i always ask for a glass of water as well to make sure i'm always hydrating because hydration is especially an ileostomy with the amount of fluid that we're losing during the day hydration is really really important okay. howard did you have to adapt your um your diet I, you know, I tried over the years, um, and I eat fairly healthy to, to begin with, although come the night, it's a little bit later for me, Gordon, but, but you know, I'm, I'm into the ice cream and the chips and, you know, that sort of thing, right? And so I, there's, there's an hour which, you know, at, when I'm past, it, it becomes more difficult, and on the Fridays and, and Saturday nights. Um, what I would say is that I, I've tried over the years, I, I get blockages every so often, and then I'll turn towards more fiber food or prunes just to keep it regular. So I, I watch it, but how I typically, and so I eat all foods, uh, except for mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms, but I eat all foods. And and what, what happens for me is if I'm feeling the beginning of, of, of blockage, then, then I just have a, a, a you know, a, I've got extra prunes around all the time and just, you know, 
I'll eat a few and then a few more. And, and then eventually things kind of work their way through. Mm -hmm. um, if I go too far and try and clear everything right away, then it becomes, you know, <clears throat> it lasts, the clearing lasts for days and I'll end up, you know, uh, are going much more often. So, so I do it in kind of, as Gordon's suggesting, kind of like a, a slow, uh, you know, slowly at a time, you know, I'm not, I'm not eating too much of one or, or another thing, but I eat all kinds of food. Um, I don't drink. Um, right? And so that, um, not because, I, you know, I, I should say I rarely drink because, I, you know, but, and if I do, it's not very much to begin with. Um, I got to drink more water and I drink tea to stay hydrated as well. You know, that, that certainly is helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, um, ileostomy or, or colostomy, um, you know, there's, there's mucus there and, and if it dries out and then, then things are going to get caught. And so, um, you know, staying hydrated, uh, is, is, uh, is really important. How did you adapt to uh, physical activity or should I ask, when did you start doing physical activity after having your, uh, ileostomy? Um, yeah, I, 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 um, that was probably a tough point for me because I was very, uh, active, um, and, and, um, you know, I went through eight months worth of treatment, certainly not to the same degree as Gordon did, uh, um, you know, we've gone through years of it and, and not to the same degree. Um, I, I, um, I was worried, I was in certain you know, whether it was swimming or, or in the ocean and, and, or other things, I was always worried my bag was going to fall off. Mm. Right. And I was like, okay, what's going to happen now? I, I remember, I remember actually being on a date um, and, and I had, I didn't have extra bags. It's it scarred me to always carry extra. And, and my stomach was going bad and, 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 and it, it, it turned into a little bit of a, a you know, at the time, you know, what was a, a little bit of a nightmare scenario for me, but, but she didn't seem to care. So, so, um, you know, my activity is now, I use a, 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 a tape, the kind of tape that you'd find in a hospital that kind of um, uh, tapes my bag down. And, and so if I'm in a hot tub or if I'm swimming, even if I'm skiing uh, for me, cause, because I irrigate in the morning, I just tape the, the bag flat. And, and so, um, um, so it allows me to, to like be in any situation and I don't have to worry about uh, something happening with respect to the bag. Cause I don't use any paste or anything of that nature. I just use the mini pouch by, by uh, Coloplast. Uh, that's really meant for, uh, I think a different purpose, but it's, um, um, uh, that, that's what I use, and, and then I use a little bit of tape to, to tape it down so it remains flat. I guess in, in my experience, um, I, I had been through very, very difficult several years of uh, stage four cancer and treatment that was debilitating. And I had I had bone mets. I had a met in my right hip, mm. and I could barely walk. Um, now I remembered when I had the hypex surgery that the recovery from that was very arduous, and I needed a cane to walk from that. Now when I went into uh, I, I I I went and had the immunotherapy and the immunotherapy started clearing up the cancer and I started to move again but I still had a lot of digestive pain in the lower part of my colon which made uh, doing activity very difficult I was doing more of like rehab where I was getting kind of like a lot of massage therapy uh, than actual exercise then when I had the surgery to remove my colon, I was thinking back to the HIPEC and what the recovery was. And amazingly, it was like the body, once it got rid of the cancer, just started to heal. And the, the bag was not, it did not affect any of that. So I was walking and I didn't have pain anymore. And I went in the water and I didn't have pain anymore and I could swim. And, um, all, all of that digestive uh, pain disappeared and I started to walk and I 
built myself up and I within a few months I was walking for an hour plus and I was swimming laps and exercising with a trainer um, and so I I find in my experience the bag is just a part of my life that I deal with as when dealing with an activity so I'm going to train at 2 p.m so right 10 minutes before I empty my bag uh, I'm going to go for a swim. Um, I use this mesh. So because I'm going to be producing, unlike a colostomy, the mesh is flexible. It has give, but it holds the bag to the body. And it's a mesh, so it dries very quickly. And bathing suit on top, and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've never had any bag issues um, doing any exercise. I did have many issues um, when I had the reversal mm -hmm. of running to the bathroom in the middle of exercising, sometimes making it, sometimes not making it. I had a, a uh, uh, to, 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 to go swimming uh, was frightening for me in that situation. Now I, I feel a lot more confident to be able to do a lot of different exercise. I've, I've gone in the ocean, I've gone snorkeling, um, I was a scuba diver. I, I, I know people scuba dive with an ostomy and it's something that I'm uh, looking forward to doing uh, at some point again. Um, uh, I find that uh, the when I when I had the cancer, I was constantly dealing with uh, debilitating issues either from the cancer or from the treatment or from both. With the ostomy, it's just a matter of, like Howard said, make sure you have extra bags with you. Make sure you have your have your kit with you, with your with everything that you need. Uh, if you're going to be spending the whole day away from home, take a little uh, knapsack and have have a change of clothes. Have have the stuff that you need, and then do everything that you have to do. And uh, and it really. So the bag itself doesn't limit you from anything. It just requires you to be prepared and to know sometimes you'll have a have something happen that you'll have to, you know, take care of. But um, but certainly in terms of of being able to do all the activities I want to do, uh, I have no limitations with with uh, the ostomy. And um have you found that uh for example i know some people are worried about going swimming taking their shirt off having other people see their ostomy what has been the feedback you've received from people in those situations well there's no feedback because nobody really cares um and i i'm i'm in florida for the winter i live in a, a condo uh we have our pool right next door i go swimming pretty much every single day and what i do um is i Sometimes I wear a swim shirt to cover everything. Sometimes I don't. I pull my bathing suit up like, you know, like an old man. I pull it up because really I want to cover the, the stoma area and make sure everything is secure. Um, but after I finish swimming, um, whether it's at the beach or here, I, I just take it out uh, and let it air dry. Um, and uh, nobody, nobody says anything or or makes a comment. It's the, the bag is opaque. Um, it's it's really it's really kind of an attitude. Um, you know, I'm wearing I'm wearing my shirt that says no colon still rolling. I mean, I I I don't hide the fact that I have have this. If anybody has a question, the only, you know the only person that ever sp spoke to me about it was someone whose son has a urostomy. Mm. And he, we were just talking about what it was like, and he had it as a as an infant. He had a a, a crazy condition um, that they had to create a, a urostomy for an infant. And he needed specialized surgery. So the only person so far who's mentioned anything is someone who's familiar with what it's like. I haven't received any comments from anybody else, and and I think really um, it's more about our own our own attitude. Um, uh, than than anything else uh everybody's got their own 
issues. I think it's the same thing about when I go to a public washroom, I use the handicap washroom because it gives me more, more room and it's it maybe has a sink there. It's easier for me. We have a disability. It's something that we have to accept that we have to deal with. But uh, the point is not to let it stop us from living our life to the fullest. Absolutely. And I, I thank you for sharing that sentiment with us as well. And I think it takes time also to get used to used to it. And once once you're there to continue to do your activity and continue to live your life to its fullest as well. I think um, look, 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 I think the first time you step into the ocean or into the swimming pool, there's always that thought in the back of your head. Oh, my gosh, like is something going to happen? But then once you realize these products are very well made and if 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 your appliance is on properly um nothing's nothing's going to happen you know you i shower with it all the time it's made to hold your stool so it's going to be able to take care of some seawater or pool water and that kind of opens up your whole world to realize oh i really can do all of this um, uh, I don't have to sit on the sidelines and watch other people doing these activities. Howard, you were saying that you're quite physically active. Um, I have a question about like, if like, you know, during physical activity, if you start sweating, if you were, you know, um, doing, uh, muscle work, uh, how, how have you found that to be as an experience? Have you had to like change your, uh, way of applying your appliance or, it doesn't really affect it, the fact that you're sweating and doing physical activity. Yeah, it, it, it hasn't affected it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've had different types of appliances. I, I use a very um, uh, sticky uh, mini mini pad, uh, mini, mini bag from, from Coloplast. And then when I tape it down, I never have to worry about it because I have been in, in pools or, or the ocean and it has come off, right? And, and so, um, uh, and some of it to do with the activity that I'm doing. Uh, when I was in Florida, uh, I moved from Florida, I was kite surfing a lot. And so you're in and out of the water and you're moving quite, quite a bit. And, but since, since, you know, using um, medical tape, uh, a breathable medical tape um, uh, and taping at least the top part down, um, I've had no issues at all. Um, I would like to, you know, it's interesting. Um, I feel the same way as Gordon, like my, my bag is my bag, it's part of me. And I actually feel very, very blessed. Just moments ago, my I've got three children, they're eight, seven, and five. And my eight-year-old was coming to talk to me. And, and it's, you know, and, and and I wouldn't have gone through the road that I went through that led me to to my wife and, and the children. And, and um, you know, if it had not been for cancer, frankly, it would have taken me down a different road. And, and so I couldn't be happier where I am. I, I would say early on, when I was just getting back um, after you know the eight months of treatments, uh, I was in a conference, there must've been a thousand people there and, and I was still going through chemo afterwards um, and, and it created a lot of gas in my system. And, and what's interesting, um, which, which I, I'm still conscious of today is the fact that you can't stop the gas from coming out, right? It comes out when it wants to come out and it's going to make whatever sound it wants when it comes out. And, and when I was a, at this conference, uh, I remember it clearly, I just had a whole bunch of, there was like, somebody was speaking, there were a thousand and, and, and I, there was just a lot of gas coming out of me and it was making really loud sounds, right? And, and so, you just kind of sit there and ignore it, and, and you know as much as you can. Uh, I've been in situations and meetings, and 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 it just does what it wants. It it it's a little nerve wracking, I gotta say, right? You know, depending on who you're with and 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 what they what they know, because it sounds like you're you know letting gas go, but it's not like there's any control whatsoever, mm -hmm. and and so. That to me, probably less less the 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 um, the viewing because it doesn't bother me at all. But but the gas part probably has has uh, affected me more from kind of being in situations where where people don't know that you even have a bag and that you're just you know letting go, right? And and so um, I'm much more used to it today 
uh, frankly, but early, early stages, um, it, it was, it weighed heavy on my mind when I was going into meetings and, and conferences. And I've spoken a lot at conferences and things of that nature. So um, I just keep going. I just move on as if there wasn't any sound and, and, and uh, or I'll look at the person next to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's always a way to kind of deflect it. Um, but that, that would probably be the most, the, 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 the sounds are, are probably the, the, the most uh, uh, that I had to get used to. I wanted to add one thing. This, this is a great thing too. So this is a, it's an extra bit of um, tape, but it's not tape. It's, it's more like the material that's in your, your wafer mm -hmm. and it extend it extends it. So sometimes, um, uh, if you feel that the outside of your wafer is lifting a little bit or the seal isn't great or you want or you're doing something a little more strenuous and you want a little more security for your appliance, um, these these things are really, really good. Um, it's almost more just to give you the confidence like, OK, I'm really secure and everything uh, and everything is good. Um, so, uh, j just like uh, Howard was saying with the tape that he uses for his situation, I think for, for an ileostomy, this kind of barrier extender, I think it's called is, mm -hmm. is a very useful thing to have. Yeah. You know, given Gordon's showing a lot of stuff, I just pulled out of my backpack kind of what I use and, 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 and this is just a bag that I carry. I have one in my car and, and the, the, the mini pouches I use are, are quite small. They're, 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 they're like this, they're, they're disposable. So you just pull it off and put it back on. And, and so I, I keep in my bag, I keep a, a roll of tape, which is the medical tape that you'd see. If you get an IV or something of that nature from, from the hospital, it's breathable tape. I don't know whether you can see this, but, but it's breathable tape that I put down. And the only other thing I bring are trash bags, you know, just mm -hmm. small little bags. So that, that is my you know, uh, um, my uh, uh, bag that I bring around with me at all times, you know, small trash bags, a little bit of tape and, and, and some extra bags. And, and um, you know, on, on my side, different for, for Gordon in terms of the appliances he uses, that, that works fine. Yeah, you know? yeah my, ba my bag is a little bit bigger because I've, I've got a two piece system and I need uh, paste and, and stoma powder and scissors and of course the trash bag as well and uh and uh, uh but but it's the the the, the principle is the same you know just it's always good to always have extra supplies with you because uh the body is going to do what it's going to do and um and you just don't want to be in a situation where you need to do a change and you don't have your supplies so uh uh, it's it's just it it becomes sort of second nature I think before you go somewhere you just grab your supplies and you and and you and you do what you got to do. And when you travel, do you bring the same thing with you, or do you adapt a little bit differently? Well, so for, for traveling, um, what I will do is I will put multiple like normally I'll have one bag and one wafer and my other uh, accessories if I'm traveling let's say i'm going on an airplane uh, i'll i'll bring make sure to bring this on the plane and and it's important for people to understand that you can bring those ostomy scissors with for the the coloplast ones are good because they're they're not even sharp but you can bring your ostomy scissors bring your supplies I, I i'll have maybe three bags or four bags in the kit to make sure if i go on a trip i'm going to make sure i have at least double the amount of supplies that I think I'm going to need um, uh, because you've got to you've got to be prepared once I arrive here now I, I, I know where to buy the supplies locally but when you're on the road you, you really should always have uh, much more than you think you need um, uh, to, 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 to be safe but other than that um, uh, the flying on an airplane is i haven't found that to be an issue it's just the same as anything else empty before you go on the plane often i'll have to empty once when i'm on the on the flight um 
But other than that, the change of pressure doesn't affect anything that I've seen. Um, I just did a very long two week road trip uh, through the US uh, coming from, uh, I went from home to Toronto to see my kids and then we made a whole trip to, down to Florida and it was, it was great. So driving in the car, I sometimes have to adapt in the afternoon if it's filling up with gas, I'm, I'm twiddling my seatbelt a little bit possibly. Um, but uh, s certainly it, it, it's not difficult because you're, you're stopping for lunch or you're stopping for gas or you're stopping for something else. So you go and you empty, that's all. You just add one step to, to all of those things, empty my bag, that's all, and continue. Um, uh, it was, it was interesting experience for me because it was the first real lengthy trip, staying in a hotel, eating out three meals a day, going to attractions. Um, and it was great. It was fantastic. Uh, so there's no reason to be afraid of traveling. Um, and it's like the same thing with swimming or exercise. Just be prepared, have your extra supplies with you, empty when you have the opportunity, when you need to, and enjoy. Uh, that's really the message I think that goes across to, to all things. Absolutely. And Howard, pretty much the same thing when you travel or do anything different? Yeah. I, you know, I bring, so, so I, typically on a typical day, I'll put on that mini pouch that you saw in the morning uh, and then maybe at night and then maybe once during the day. So I'll use three pouches in a day. Um, and so when I travel, I bring at least four and I assume that I'm going to be stuck for at least two more days. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always, and then on top of that, I've got multiple like like things like this floating around everywhere and so so i've got a whole bunch of extra so i'm always bringing extra things you can't you can't be in a position where you're going to run out right so so you know that that that's not not a good day uh at, at all and and so um i always and i order way in advance and i don't know whether i don't want to be a, a plug for for um you know suppliers but in Canada, I use pay less medical and they seem to be very good in terms of price because I order a lot of stuff. Usually I'm ordering for at least six months in advance, right? Because I'm one of those that when, when I order soap, I order like 10 boxes of it, right? And, and so, um, so, so um, look around. There are, is variability in pricing. No doubt that there is. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you can always call and say, if I'm ordering a bunch of stuff, uh, can I going to get a little bit of a discount? And, and so that's, that's also possible. It does, you know, it, it's not, uh, um, it does cost money. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my pouches are a few dollars each, you know, if I'm replacing it four times a day, that's, you know, $12 and then the irrigation sleeve and then the lubricant and then, the, you know, so the, the costs do add up. And, and so there's different ways to kind of manage that. Do, do you have any government assistance in British Columbia for your supplies? Um, uh, you know, I, I moved from Florida where, where you are uh, about a year ago and actually I don't, don't even I don't know that I do <laughs> so that's a good question in, in Quebec they they the government gives I think around 1200 1300 a year which covers maybe a third ish of mm -hmm. the cost because my my appliances are not two or three dollars each they're twenty dollars each um right. it's quite I find it quite expensive um I just ordered like five months supply um, to bring down here, and uh, it's it's a lot of money. Um, it, it's 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 something that probably we should talk about the folks at uh, Colorectal Cancer Canada to advocate for maybe a national program. The only national thing that's available is the disability tax credit. Yes. Um, which, which is something you should definitely look into, Howard, um, because it is a tax credit for anyone with a with an ostomy. 
Um, and but there should be there should be more uniform assistance across the country, I think, because the, the the supplies are very expensive and and not every not everyone's in a position where they're able to afford um, the the cost. And uh, um, but we don't have a choice. We you know, and there is some variability, but there's not like tons mm -hmm. of suppliers out there. No, absolutely. And it's something that's on the on the books for us to be uh, looking into over the next uh, little while, because, yes, a lot of people do bring up that um, additional stressor than everything that can be uh, with the ostomy as well. Having that additional stressor can add um, to to it. Um, I'm going to change gears a little bit. Howard, you talked a little bit about it. Um, you dated with an ostomy. Uh, you started a relationship with an ostomy. How did you adapt to that? Um, you know, if if you're, you know, what I was always concerned and would talk about it um, because I was 38 at the time, and and you know, and so I would talk about it up front, like you know, I I, I recall. Being in a being in a relationship and, and prior to just jumping into bed, you know, I'd have a conversation, right? This is this is what, what I have, and so I was more conscious about it than uh, certainly initially than than um, I needed to be. It was it was I would say more ego driven, but mm -hmm. um, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, it 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 doesn't uh, um, it, nobody cared, right? No, nobody really cares, you know, and so, and Gordon said it best that, that you know, people don't pay attention to these things. And, and if somebody does, by the way, then, then, then that's a very clear red flag that you shouldn't be with that person. You know, I would say that, right? And so, so um, nobody ever cared. Um, uh, you know, it, it was not something that, you know, they were more curious, if anything. Like, what do you do? You're irrigating. What, what, what is this? If they didn't understand it. Uh, my children are young. And, and so, you know, I described it as just, just frankly, uh, you know, it being, uh, you know, a, a boo-boo and, and, and it's just a, a wound that doesn't heal. And, and so they're starting to understand it now better because they can mm -hmm. see that I'm irrigating and, and nothing's coming up my back end. Right. And so, um, so, so, I've explained it more over over the years, but um, um, it, it it was it was never it was never an issue. Um, although I was very conscious of it uh, initially uh, when I started the date. Howard, have you found that it um, influenced your intimacy with your spouse? No, um, you know, I, I'd say this, that, that, you know, when you go through uh, the surgery, um, you know, it, it, it certainly affects the nerves in that area from, from a, uh, you know, erectile dysfunction perspective. I went through a whole bunch of things from, from God, I remember sitting in the doctor's office and, and him sticking a shot in my penis and, you know, and, and then I walked around being hard without even you know, and I said, wow, this is uncomfortable, right? It was just like, uh, how did this happen, right? And, and so everybody's different in that, that way. Um, but the fact of the matter is there, there are drugs in the market today um, that are available that, that, you know, resolve the problem uh, um, mm -hmm. for the most part. And, and so that, that never, and I don't even, you know, over time, the, the nerves settle down and, and, you know, find their way. And, and so... Um, it gets better. Um, early days after surgery and chemo, it was much more of a struggle. Um, but then, um, and today, uh, 20 years later, um, I don't use the Cialis. I've got some here, but, you know, I don't use the Cialis at all. Um, frankly, it just kind of regenerated. Uh, um, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm older too, right? So I can't expect to be this, the, the same sort of libido when I was 20 and I'm in my mid fifties. Right. And so, 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 um, yeah, um, and that was something that I would, you know, prepare for, 
you know, early days when I was dating, I'd say, okay, I'll take a Viagra, you know, maybe I'm going to get lucky tonight, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and so, um, but, but um, yeah, not, not, um, um, I, I don't, with my wife, there's nothing, uh, my wife doesn't care. Um, she doesn't even pay attention to it at all. Gordon, what has been your experience? So the for me the, the the bigger limitations were similar was was the I had a lot of scarring down there. Mm -hmm. Um so the the ED was was a bigger issue. Um you can't be as spontaneous. Like I said earlier, I'm quieter in the morning and I can do more activities. So sometimes you have to schedule things rather than just you know, after dinner is not the greatest time. There's a lot mm -hmm. of gas and a lot of output. So mornings are better. Um, you know, maybe you just have to plan plan a little more. I've been married over 30 years now. Uh, so, you know, th things settle into a, into a different kind of routine. The, the bag that I use, one thing that's really nice about it, and it works for the shower too. You can wear it like this or you can fold it there's a little flap and you can fold it. There's a Velcro. So it, it shrinks the bag significantly. So it leaves everything kind of available mm -hmm. um, and, and makes it for very, you really don't notice it um, uh, at all uh, during intimate times. The issue for me with an ileostomy is it, it needs to be a quiet time, you know, you need to empty and it needs to be a kind of a quiet time of the day uh, production wise. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, it's been more recovering from surgery, recovering from treatment. Um, those are the more long lasting issues that that have to be dealt with. I also want to point out because neither of us are women. There are some excellent YouTube videos from young women, I, most of them have Crohn's, but because it seems to be to affect people in their young twenties, and they talk about dating and and um, and intimacy and marriage and pregnancy and all of these things. So, if any women are watching this and would want to get kind of more of a women's perspective, because there are different issues on how the surgery affects women uh, versus men. Um, those are great resources to to look at. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Gordon, for sharing that, because I was just about to say that there's a plethora of information that's out there, especially other experience uh, from women and from uh, different individuals also um, on YouTube and even Colorectal Cancer Canada would be super happy to share these videos or these different resources with individuals that have questions that haven't been answered today on that. I will thank you both immensely for being honest, sharing your tips, sharing what you've learned throughout the years. We greatly appreciate it. For the people that are watching, if you have any questions that we haven't answered, you're welcome to send us an email to support at colorectalcancer.com. We'll be very happy to answer any questions and offer, to offer support as well. There's different means also through our organization that you can obtain support and also talk with individuals that are going through the same thing as you uh, through support groups to peer support as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Gordon, Howard, thank you. Thank you. I want to say, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. that, that just in, in closing, um, when I was diagnosed, I met Bunny Schwartz, uh, who uh, was the original founders with Barry uh, of Colon Cancer Canada. And they were just a tremendous, tremendous support system for me. Um, just so they opened their hearts and, and, and uh, um, I can't thank and do enough for, for the organization. So I, I want to put that out there. I've been involved over to every single year for, for the past 20 years uh, uh, with Bunny. And, and uh, um, I want to thank you uh, and your your organization for, for being there for me for the past 20 years. We appreciate it. Truly, both of you. Thank you for, for being the voice of many.